وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد إن شاء الله تعالى In this lecture بإذن الله الكريم I want to tackle four things بإذن الله الكريم Four things I want to discuss and tackle and speak about in this uh, lessons إن شاء الله تعالى in today's lesson بإذن الله الكريم In this lecture the first thing I want to speak about is rulings regarding praying in the house. Some ahkam, some tawjihat, some advices I could give inshallah ta'ala and I can share regarding praying inside the houses. The second thing inshallah ta'ala I want to speak about is Jum'ah in the house. Salatul Jum'ah uh, and some rulings regarding praying it in the house. That's number two. And the third point that I, inshallah ta'ala, uh, want to discuss and talk about is the adhan, the caller to prayer. That many of us are hearing in Muslim countries, the adhan being done. Some of the things related to that. And the fourth, inshallah ta'ala, point I want to speak about is some innovative things that people are doing at this particular time. Uh, thinking that this is the way to remove the coronavirus and this is an innovative uh, way that has no basis in our religion. So inshallah ta'ala, those are the four things I want to speak about in this lecture inshallah ta'ala. Let's start with the first which is praying inside the houses. Many of us are saddened and hurt by the fact that we can't pray the jama'ah in the masjid, that we've been deprived from that privilege and that honor, that virtue, and that uh, feeling of praying with our brothers in the masjid and sisters praying with their sisters in the masjid, all of that has now been brought to an end. And it saddens, haqiqatan, anyone who has tasted the sweetness of al-iman, anyone who uh, knows the joy you receive when you pray in those congregations, when you pray Fajr in the masjid, you pray Isha in the masjid, you pray Dhuhr in the masjid, you pray Asr in the masjid and Maghrib. And you pray all of your salahs in the masjid. How it feels, the feeling you get from it. The increase of Iman. When you pray Fajr in the masjid and you sit there until sunrise and then you leave, all of that has now been taken away from you. And it hurts many of us. But I want to rest, reassure you and tell you to rest assured that inshallah ta'ala, your reward is still with you, even if you're not doing it. Al-Alama Muhammad ibn Salih al-Uthaymin He said Al-Ma'adhura yuktabu lahu ajru jama'ati The individual who is excused Who the Sharia has excused He gets the reward Of the congregation he used to participate in And he's going to get the reward Kamilan the Sheikh said Complete reward Ida kana min adati an yusallia ma'al jama'a but that is with the condition that he was an individual who used to pray in the jama'ah. And he used to pray in the congregation. Based on the statement of the Prophet where he said, If a person becomes sick or he travels, And he will get the reward or she will get the reward of what they used to do when they were healthy and when they were resident. Sickness and being a, a traveler has deprived you from some things. Because of a sickness, you're unable to do particular things. Because of being a traveler, you can't do particular things. They used to do. Don't worry, the Prophet said, alayhi salatu salam you will get the reward of whatever you used to do when you were healthy 
or when you are resident. The coronavirus, or as known as the COVID-19, is uh, and it's considered يعتبر من الأعذار الشرعية. It is considered from the legislated things in the religion, or it's from those things which the Sharia has excused us for. يعني COVID-19 is from the things that excuses a person from participating in the jama'ah or going to the congregational prayer. It is. So, don't worry, rest assured. Al-Allama, Alauddin al-Mardawi Abu al-Hasan, in his kitab al-Insaf, fi ma'rifat al-Rajih min al-Khilaf, a great book, where he mentions the khilafat uh, that are present and the different riwayat of Imam Ahmad rahimahullah. He does a fiqh al-muqaran fi madhab al-Imam Ahmad in that book al-Insaf. And he is uh, working with the kitab al-Muqni' by Ibn Qudama al-Maqdisi rahimahullah. Ala kulli hal al-Mardawi who said in his kitab al-Insaf fi ma'rifat al-Rajih min al-Khilaf. He says, وَيُعْذَرُ فِي تَرْكِ الْجُمُوعَةِ وَالْجَمَاعَةِ الْمَرِيضُ بِلَا نِزَاعٍ وَيُعْذَرُ أَيْضًا فِي تَرْكِهِمَا لِخَوْفِ حُدُوثِ الْمَرَضِ He said, a person is excused for leaving the Jumu'ah and the Jama'ah if he's sick, بِلَا نِزَاعٍ without a dispute. A person is excused if he's sick, if he's sick, by unanimous agreement amongst the scholars, that if he's sick, he doesn't have to participate the Friday congregational prayer and the normal, normal uh, jama'ah in the masjid. He doesn't have to. This is bila niza'in without any disputes. وَيُعْذَرُ أَيْضًا فِي تَرْكِهِمَا And also the person is excused in leaving off those two لِخَوْفِ حُدُوثِ الْمَرَضِ If there's a fear that illness may have come from this. That he fears that maybe if he goes there, he's going to get illness from it. He doesn't have, he is, he's excused. Okay, then the COVID-19 is from those things. That when we uh, look at it, we are scared and we are fearful that if we go to the masjid and we come in contact with some people, that this illness might come from them to us. Um, so with the permission of Allah, of course, then we are now permitted to not have, not to participate in the Jumu'ah and the Jama'ah. So what is it that is, that is needed from us? What is needed from us is to pray at home now. To pray the salawat in the house. To pray the Jumu'ah in the house. But some people forget some particular rules and regulations that need to be done. From the things that need to be done whilst at home is أَخْذُ um, zina, Adorning yourself and beautifying yourself for the prayer. Even if you're praying by yourself, my brothers and my sisters, you have to make sure that you wear decent clothes. You're not allowed to uh, wear raggedy clothes, clothes that has stains on it, and, and you say, I'm just going to pray the Lord. This is Allah Azza wa Jalla in which you're going to stand in front of. Beautify yourself. Dress well. Also, there are other evidences that show that if there's a fear that you can pray in your houses. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in the Quran, وَأُوحَيْنَا إِلَى مُوسَى وَأَخِيهِ أَن تَبَوَّأَ لِقَوْمِكُمَا بِمِصْرَ بُيُوتَ وَجَعَلُوا بُيُوتَكُمْ قِبَلَةً Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us, وَأُوحَيْنَا إِلَى مُوسَى وَأَخِيهِ We have sent down upon Musa and his brother, Harun. And Musa and Harun, they are from a people known as Bani Israel. And Bani Israel, they were subjugated and they were under the, uh, under the tyrannical leader, Fir'aun. And Fir'aun was harming Banu Israel. He placed in their hearts fear. He terrorized them. Fir'aun. Allah Ta'ala, what did he say to them? وَجَعَلُوا بُيُوتَكُمْ قِبَلَةً Because they couldn't go outside and pray. Allah Ta'ala, because of the fear of Fir'aun, Allah Ta'ala, he told them to pray in their houses. And the coronavirus can be taken a qiyas from this, that the fear of other people's illnesses coming to us, allows us to pray in our houses. 
Mujahid ibn Jabal rahimahullahi said, Kanu la yusalluna illa khaifin. They never used to pray except fearful, because they were scared of Fir'aun. They were very scared of him. So they used to only pray scared. For umiru an yusallu fi buyutin. And they then, was com- then they were commanded to pray in their houses because of the fear that they had for uh, Fir'aun. Allah ta'ala, he said, وَجَعَلُوا بُيُوتَكُمْ قِبَلًا Then go pray in your houses. So the ulama, they took from this the permissibility of if a person is scared, he can pray in his house. Whether he's scared of an enemy, whether he's scared of an illness, whether he's scared of anything other than that, fear is one of the things that allows you to pray in your houses. Also, what we need to be doing, inshallah ta'ala, um, is that the men who are praying at home, that they pray with their families in a congregation, in a jama'ah. Based on the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ where he said, Salatu rajuli ma'ar rajuli azka min salatihi wahda. Praying with an, one man, praying with another man is more greater than him praying by himself. Wa salatu rajuli ma'ar rajulaini. And a man praying with two men is better azka min salatihi ma'ar rajuli than praying with one man. وَمَا كَانُوا أَكْثَرَ فَهُوَ أَحَبُّ إِلَى اللَّهِ And the more that they are, the more it's beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if there's men in the house, um, then it's wajib for them to pray congregation. If two men or more are in the house, it's obligatory that they uh, make a jama'ah. And this is the view held by uh, Imam Ahmad rahimahullah and Ata and Awza'i and Abu Thawr and Ibn Qudam and Ibn Taymiyyah. This is what the, the opinion that they held. They held the opinion that if men, two men or more are in the house, they pray jama'ah. They pray jama'ah. Also, what I will encourage each and every one of you is to place or to make a particular place in the house known as the musalla. Don't just pray anywhere randomly. It is better to have one particular room that everyone prays in. If your house is, mashallah, big enough, then make a little musalla for the family that they come to. You keep that place in tahir and clean, and they come and they pray in that area. This is something which, number one, is taken from the sunnah without a doubt, and it also keeps that spirit of going to the masjid, that kind of uh, mindset that you're going somewhere. You leave in one room and you're going to the other room. And Imam Malik narrated in his Muwatta, this is where it's taken from in the Sunnah. Ali uh, ibn Shihab al Zuhri and Muhammad ibn al Rabi' al Ansari. He said, and Itban ibn Malik, Itban ibn Malik, Kana ya ummu qawmahu, he used to lead his people. Wa huwa a'ma, and he was a blind man. Wa anna uqala li Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And one day Itban ibn Malik said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said to the Prophet, إِنَّهَا تَكُونُ الظُّلْمَةُ وَالْمَطَرُ وَالسَّيْلُ O Messenger of Allah, wind, um, a flood, rain, darkness, has, it happens at night. وَأَنَا رَجُلٌ ضَرِيرٌ And I'm a blind man. فَصَلِّ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ فِي بَيْتِي O Messenger of Allah, come and pray in my house for me. مَكَانًا أَتَّخِذُهُ مُصَلًّا A place where I can take it as a musalla. فَجَاءَهُ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ The Prophet came to him فَقَالَ أَيْنَ تُحِبُّ أَنْ أُصَلِّيَا The Prophet came to his house and the Prophet said where would you want me to pray for you in? فَأَشَارَ لَهُ إِلَى مَكَانٍ The man pointed at a place in his house and he said O Messenger of Allah pray over here for me فَصَلَّى فِيهِ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ So the Prophet ﷺ prayed in that place for that companion. This shows us that it's good and it's something we should try to do which is to take a particular place in our house known as the musalla. Also, the musalla does not take the ahkam and the rulings of the masjid. So you don't do tahiyatul masjid. Um, women who are on their menstruation or on their postnatal bleeding and etc. They can sit there and they can go there. It doesn't take the ruling of the masjid. Okay, it doesn't. The, what does the jama'ah start from? The jama'ah bithnaini fa'akthar Two or more people is a jama'ah And it is also obligatory to straighten the lines Behind the imam 
So if the Imam is leading, he goes forward and everyone else goes behind him. The children, they have to also line behind the, they have to line behind the, the Imam. They have to. If they've reached the age of seven or more, they have to line behind the uh, Imam. This is based on that which the Prophet Sallallahu did with Anas ibn Malik and the orphan and Jabir and Jabbar who were from the Ansar people. The Prophet Sallallahu he put them behind him والسلام, So two or more people, they go behind the Imam. But if it's one person, he has to stand on the right side of the Imam as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did to Abdullah ibn Abbas fi salati layli in the night prayer. When Abdullah ibn Abbas stood on the left side of the Prophet, the Prophet grabbed him and the Prophet put him on the right side. So if it's one person, you have to stand on the right side of the Imam. And if it's more than one, men, you pray behind. You pray behind the Imam, inshallah ta'ala. As for the woman, if she wants to pray in the jama'ah with the men, she prays behind the men who are behind the Imam. And the evidence for this is, uh, Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu, uh, he and an orphan and his mother, Umm Sulaim, they wanted to pray behind the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so what happened was the Prophet was at the front, and then Anas ibn Malik and the orphan were be after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and after the orphan, uh, and uh, Anas was Umm Sulaim. So there was three lines, a line for the Imam, a line for uh, Anas and the orphan, and his mother, Umm Sulaim. And that's what he said. He said, فَقَامَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ وَصَفَفْتُ وَالْيَتِيمُ وَرَاءَهُ وَالْعَجُوزُ مِنْ وَرَائِنَا He said, he said the Prophet Sallallahu stood in front of us. We prayed behind the Prophet, me and the orphan, Anas is saying, and my mother, she prayed behind us. So the women are not allowed to uh, pray with the men. She's a woman is never allowed to pray next to the men. So if, for example, if a husband is the Imam, he can't say to his wife, I'm your mahram, here you can pray next to me. No, she has to pray behind him. Okay, and if the people who are praying behind the imam are her brothers and her cousins, uh, her brothers, sorry, and her sons, she also can't stay, she can't pray next to them. She has to go behind them. The woman always has to be at the back, regardless of who those men are, whether they are her mahram or not, it doesn't matter. Also, um, every prayer should be prayed at the time it comes in. As soon as it comes in, we should pray. So when Dhuhr comes in, we pray straight away. Fajr comes in, we should pray straight, straight away. Asr, when it comes in straight away, we should pray. Maghrib, we should pray as soon as it comes in. Only prayer is Salatul Isha. Salatul Isha should be delayed. The Sunnah is to delay Salatul Isha. And the delay should not pass Muntasaf layl the middle of the night. It should not pass the middle of the night. Also, the iqama should be done for all the prayers. So every prayer that you pray, you should do the iqama. Um, also, the adhkar should be done after the prayer. When you pray the salah in the house as a jama'ah, you should do your adhkar after the, after the prayer. And also, do not leave off, my beloved brothers and sisters, the sunan al-rawatib. The sunnahs, the 12 rak'ah sunnah that we should be praying every, every day. Also, there is no qunut when plagues and pandemics happen. There was no qunut, there was no qunut that was done when the ta'un amwas took place. Okay, at the time of Umar radiallahu anhu, the ta'un, the plague that happened in Sham, no one done qunut in the prayer. So there was no, uh, there's no narration that says that the qunut was done. So there should be no qunut done by anyone because if there was uh, evidence for that, the early generation would have uh, done so. Also, the strongest opinion is the imam of a child. A little child can lead the prayer. If he's seven years old or even six years old, but he's mumayyaz. He's a sabiyun mumayyaz. He's a child, but he can distinguish things. Okay, he hasn't reached age of puberty, but he's mumayyaz. And he knows things. He's a clever, sharp child. He can lead the prayer. And the evidence for this is the hadith of Amr ibn Salama. He 
He said, فَنَظَرُوا فَلَمْ يَكُنْ أَحَدٌ أَكْثَرَ مِنِّي قُرْآنًا فَقَدَّمُونِي وَأَنَا بْنُ سِتِّنْ أَوْ سَبْعٍ He said, they looked around, they couldn't find anyone who had more Qur'an than me. فَقَدِّمُونِي وَأَنَا بْنُ سِتِّنْ أَوْ سَبْعٍ They put me forward. And I was only six or seven years old. Now we're going to move on to the second part of our uh, lecture, inshallah ta'ala, which is Salatul Jumu'ah. Salatul Jumu'ah, my beloved brothers and sisters, is not allowed to be done in the house. Salatul Jumu'ah cannot be prayed in the house. So what is it that you must do? It is obligatory to pray in the house Salatul Dhuhri. Salatul Dhuhr has to be prayed. And it has to be prayed at its time. Okay? Four rak'ah. And it should be prayed after the zenith, بعد الزوال. After the zenith. Friday, as, as you all know, my beloved brothers and sisters, is a great day. It has virtues, it has unique things that should be done this day. But from the things that shouldn't be done on Friday, since we're not going to be praying in the masjid, is that we shouldn't shower. If you want to, you can shower, but you can't shower the ghusl of Jumu'ah. Because the Prophet wasallam he told us, he said, إِذَا جَاءَ أَحَدُكُمُ الْجُمُعَةَ فَلْيَغْتَسِلْ If one of you comes to the Jumu'ah, then do ghusl. Shower. So the showering is done for the prayer and not for the day. Okay? So we don't do the ghusl because of the Friday, but we do it for the Jumu'ah prayer. And Ibn Abdul Bar rahimahullah, he transmitted a consensus on that, and Ibn Mulaqin transmitted that consensus. Ibn Mulaqin, he transmitted that consensus. The third point that I wanted to speak about, inshallah ta'ala, in this lecture, is the adhan, the caller to prayer. So there's some things, inshallah ta'ala, I want to discuss uh, in the uh, adhan. The adhan of this moment that we're living in, or this particular time, is that we hear, especially in Muslim countries where the adhan is heard loudly, we hear the mu'adhin saying to the people, Sallu fi rihali Sallu fi buyutikum Pray in your houses. So inshallah ta'ala, I want to cover how should one make this adhan if he's a mu'adhin of a masjid? How should he do it? The way that this statement, which is Sallu fi buyutikum, should be said is in three ways. The first way is he or the first way is he does not say hayy ala salah and he doesn't say hayy ala al-falah. Instead, he says sallu fi buyutikum. That's one way. The second way, way is that he says hayy ala salah and he says hayy ala al-falah and after it he says sallu fi buyutikum. And the third one is, he does the complete adhan, and once he finishes the adhan, he says, Sallu fi buyutikum. And the Imam al Nawawi, rahimahullah, in the Sharh Sahih Muslim, he said that all of these forms are permissible. All of them, the Sunnah has come regarding it. But the Imam al Nawawi, rahimahullah, he said that the best form is to do the Adhan first and complete the Adhan and once the Adhan is finished the Mu'adhin says to the people Sallu fi buyutikum Pray in your houses and the Sunnah is that he says it twice Wuqufan lin nasi so we can stand over the text and follow the, uh, as the text says Sallu fi buyutikum, sallu fi buyutikum. He says it twice. The statement of Al-Imam al is, he said, Rahimahullah, he said, Ahsanu, it is greater for the person to say it after the adhan, liyabqa nazmu al-adhani ala wad'ih. So the adhan can remain in its form. And then say it after that. Um, Salatul Fajr, in many places, they do two adhans. The adhan for Salat al-Fajr is two adhans. Which one should you say the Sallu fi buyutikum? Sallu fi buyutikum should be said in the second adhan of Salat al-Fajr. The reason for that is because that is the time that the Salah has entered. Also what I want to mention here, inshallah ta'ala, is 
um, the person who's hearing the Mu'adhin say the Adhan, he should say everything that the Mu'adhin says. فَقُولُوا مِثْلَ مَا يَقُولُوا الْمُؤَذِّنُ as the Prophet said. Say everything that the Mu'adhin says. But when the Mu'adhin says, صَلُّوا فِي بُيُوتِكُمْ The person, he doesn't say anything. He doesn't respond by saying, صَلُّوا فِي بُيُوتِكُمْ with the, with the Mu'adhin because there is no evidence from the Prophet والسلام, or from the companions where when the Mu'adhin says, صَلُّوا فِي بُيُوتِكُمْ أَمَا صَلُّوا فِي رِحَالِكُمْ that the people uh, say exactly what the Mu'adhin is saying. There's no evidence for that. So everything else, say it with the Mu'adhin. Hayya ala salah and hayya ala al-falah. You say, la hawla wa la quwata illa billah. But when he says, sallu fi buyutikum, you say nothing. What about Friday? There is no Jumu'ah. The masjid, they normally make two adhans. What should they do in this situation? We say that only one adhan should be done on the day of Jumu'ah, on Friday. Because there is no Salatul Jumu'ah. So it should be like a normal day, like Dhuhr. There should not be two adhans. I want inshallah ta'ala go to the final and last point that I want to discuss inshallah ta'ala. The fourth point which is tanbih. I want to bring to your attention ala ba'd al-bid'a al-muhdatha some newly invented matters people do in the nuzul al-ta'uni wal awbiya. Some innovative things that people come with when the plague happens and the pandemics take place. The first one is, and it's things I've seen on social media and people doing and speaking about, is making dua, congre sorry, making congregational dua over the internet. So um, a person comes on live uh, Instagram or live YouTube, and so he does a congregational dua um, to repel the uh, virus and the pandemic and there's no evidence for this. Also, some people are trying to restrict a time, a particular time that everybody prays in their house. So some people are saying to people, we are here in London, so inshallah ta'ala this time we all pray, pray Risha at the same time uh, with the intention that Allah wa ta'ala lifts from us the plague and the pandemic. This is also an innovation. Also restricting a particular day for repentance. For example, you'll say, everybody online, please on Friday, we're all gonna repent to Allah Ta'ala so Allah can uplift from us this plague or this pandemic. It's also an innovation. If you wanna repent, repent every day. Restricting a day for it is an innovation. Also restricting particular adhkar, particular dhikr, particular dua that are innovated by the people is also something we should avoid and leave off. Last but not least, some people are coming with um, acts that they think it's a sunnah. And they're basing it on a weak narration uh, where they say that the Prophet has said, بَخِّرُوا بُيُوتَكُمْ بِاللُّبَانِ وَالشِّيْخِ Vaporize your houses with frankincense, frankincense and a mugwort. This hadith, it's an, a lie that was made against the Prophet He never said that alayhi salatu wasalam, nor did he sallallahu alayhi wasalam use frankincense to repel plague or pandemics in Medina, all of that which has been transmitted. The scholars and the people of knowledge have rejected it and considered it to be fabricated and made up. So these things we should avoid. The things that we should be doing uh, that are from the sunnah are so much. We should avoid innovative things. Anything I might have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me and shaitan. And Allah and his messenger are free from it. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayh. Assalamu alaikum. If you're enjoying these videos and you'd like to keep up to date with all of the courses we're going to be running, make sure you head over to amauathome.com.